Russian President Vladimir Putin recently boasted that Western sanctions, instead of weakening Russia, have actually supercharged the country's manufacturing capacity. And his claim isn't entirely baseless. This country has just announced the successful test of its new AL-41 ST-25 industrial gas turbine. With this breakthrough achievement, Putin declared that Russian technology is not inferior but is ready to compete with the West. So why might this turbine be superior even to Western technology, including Siemens? And why is Putin so confident in his country's manufacturing capabilities? Let's find out. When the West imposed some of the harshest sanctions in modern history, their goal was clear that to cut Russia off from advanced technology, cripple its economy, and ultimately force it to collapse. After all, Russia's industries had relied on Western machinery for nearly three decades. Without access to that foreign equipment, it was expected that Moscow's factories and power plants would soon grind to a halt. But what if that calculation was wrong? What if, instead of suffocating Russia, the sanctions became the very pressure that forged something new, something stronger? History had already given a clear warning. Just look at China. For years, the country lived under the constant threat of sanctions. But instead of holding China back, that pressure became fuel for its rise. The results shocked the world. Beijing pushed ahead in green energy, overtook the U.S. to become the top producer of electric vehicles, and this year sent a shockwave through global tech with DeepSeek, an AI system strong enough to rival ChatGPT itself. But this is the real blow, the launch of a 5 nanometer chip called the Kirin 9000S. It was designed by Huawei's HiSilicon and manufactured by SMIC using only Chinese-made machines. Previously, experts had insisted this was impossible, at least 10 years too soon. And yet, it truly happened. A chip that could compete with the best from Taiwan and the United States, standing as a powerful symbol that sanctions had failed to stop China's technological rise, Russia, of course, is still far behind that level of technological sophistication. It cannot design its own world-class microchips, not yet. But under the same kind of suffocating pressure, Moscow has begun to carve out victories of its own in places the West thought it could never compete. That is the context behind Vladimir Putin's bold declaration. The Russian president now insists that sanctions haven't crippled his nation at all. Instead, he says, they've lit a fire under Russian industry, forcing companies to innovate, adapt, and build domestic solutions for problems once solved only with Western imports. That is the story of its energy sector. Hold on, you know what? Everything is about to get even more mind-blowing. But before we dive deeper, make sure to smash that like button, share, and subscribe for more. Appreciate the support. Developed by experts at the United Engine Corporation, UEC, part of the state-owned Rostec Corporation, the industrial gas turbine AL41 ST25 has successfully completed testing of its second prototype with impressive results. The engine, manufactured entirely at UEC UMPO in Ufa, Republic of Bashkortostan, was specifically designed to replace imported turbines in the energy sector. With a capacity of 25 megawatts, it represents a significant leap forward in domestic technology. According to Rostec, this turbine consistently met its specified performance parameters in all operating modes, matching the quality of comparable German-made products. However, the real breakthrough lies in its deeper technical details. Its designers have created a machine that is not only powerful, but also efficient and environmentally friendly. The turbine's compact and lightweight design makes installation and operation quick and simple compared to its counterparts. It also features an advanced electronic engine controller, ensuring optimal operational performance. From an environmental standpoint, it boasts low emissions, strictly complying with both Russian and international environmental standards. The manufacturer has announced that the turbine will be installed at a gas compressor station in the Republic of Tatarstan, a strategic move following the successful and reliable performance of the first prototype already operating at the same location. What's notable is that, while the AL41 ST25 sits in a lower segment than Siemens SGT700, 33 to 34 megawatts, and SGT800, 47.5 to 62 megawatts, models in terms of power output, the most crucial aspect is its narrowed gap in efficiency. With a current efficiency rating of 39.1% and the potential for a phased improvement to 40%, the AL41 ST25 is positioned to directly compete with the 40% and 41.5% efficiency ratings of the two Siemens models, respectively. This marks the first time a domestic Russian product has achieved such an impressive combination of technical parameters. Durability is another key factor. The engine has a projected lifespan of 120,000 hours. 
with the potential to be extended to 150,000 hours. This reliability is achieved by leveraging structural components and technical solutions already proven on the mass-produced AL31 ST engine, showcasing a systematic approach to technological development and legacy. The arrival of this new turbine is more than a technical victory. It is a powerful statement that Russia is ready to achieve technological independence and is no longer reliant on foreign rivals. This is truly a boom period for Russia's industrial turbine technology. Alongside the AL-41 ST-25, the country is also achieving remarkable success with the GTD-110M, the country's first high-capacity gas turbine. Under the pressure of sanctions, specialists from the United Engine Corporation, part of the state-owned Rostec Group, achieved a major breakthrough. They developed a unique design and technology to produce the central swirl component of the low-emission combustion chamber an element with an extremely complex shape that cannot be manufactured using traditional methods. Therefore, to meet this challenge, they used a nickel-based heat-resistant alloy developed by UEC Saturn combined with additive manufacturing technology, selective laser layer-by-layer -layer synthesis. This technology was then transferred to the Additive Technologies Center, SAT, for mass production, paving the way for the GTD-110M's emergence. The turbine is designed for use in gas turbines and combined cycle power plants within the unified energy system of Russia, replacing imported turbines of similar capacity. According to Rostec, the GTD-110M outperforms foreign-made engines thanks to its smaller weight and dimensions, coupled with higher fuel efficiency. Recently, a power unit equipped with this turbine successfully completed integrated testing at the Udarnaya Thermal Power Plant in Krasnodar Krai, operating at full load for 72 hours while supplying electricity to the national grid, fully confirming all specified performance parameters. Vladimir Artyakov, first deputy CEO of Rostec, stated that this is the first domestically produced high-capacity turbine, already proven in metal, and now reaching serial production. Starting in 2024, Russia had planned to produce at least two of these turbines annually to modernize the country's power plants. The arrival of the GTD-110M not only demonstrates Russia's ability to achieve technological self-sufficiency, but also marks the beginning of a new era for its energy industry, especially as UEC Deputy CEO Sergei Mikhailov has confirmed that the turbine does not lag behind foreign competitors in technical specifications, while at the same time offering smaller size and lighter weight, significantly expanding the potential supply of gas turbine engines to customers. While the achievements with the AL-41 ST-25 and GTD-110M turbines are impressive, Russia's journey toward complete technological self-sufficiency is still full of challenges. The biggest obstacle lies in the fact that this country has been reliant on global supply chains for too long. After decades of importing, the domestic industry cannot, in a short period, produce all the complex components it needs. A prime example is advanced electronics and sophisticated control systems. While this country may be able to manufacture the turbine body and other large mechanical parts, a modern power plant requires a host of sensors, microprocessors, and software to operate efficiently. Most of these components are produced in the West or its allied nations, and access to them has been almost completely cut off. Russia faces a monumental challenge in developing domestic alternatives or sourcing them from other markets, which often lack the same level of advanced technology. Furthermore, large-scale production is another significant hurdle. Manufacturing a few prototypes is one thing. Producing dozens or hundreds of units with consistent quality and competitive costs is another entirely. To achieve this, Moscow needs to make massive investments in manufacturing infrastructure, train a highly skilled workforce of engineers and technicians, and establish a robust domestic supply chain. This requires immense capital and a long-term strategy, all while the economy is under considerable pressure. In short, the initial successes are a promising sign, but to transform technological self-sufficiency into a sustainable reality, Russia has much work ahead to overcome major obstacles related to technology, supply chains, and manufacturing scale. For decades, Moscow was chained to one name, Siemens. The German industrial titan had an iron grip on Russia's turbine market, supplying nearly every major power plant in the country. The numbers tell clearly Around 1.3 billion euros a year in Russian revenue, just a sliver of Siemens' global business, but strategically critical thanks to decades-long service and infrastructure contracts. For Russia, this was more than dependency. It was economic vulnerability. 
Siemens turbines were among the most fuel-efficient in the world, their savings translating directly into higher national output. In effect, German engineering was quietly woven into the fabric of Russia's GDP. Then came February 20, 22. War erupted in Ukraine. By May, everything ended. Siemens had abandoned the Russian market entirely. Overnight, Moscow was cut off from the very technology it had staked its energy security on. Imagine this. In a single night, countless power plants, the backbone of the economy, suddenly lose access to spare parts and maintenance services. Russia's dependence on Siemens went beyond technology. It was tied to complex maintenance processes and binding long-term contracts. Analysts warned that Russia's industrial base would wither without Siemens machines. But that has just changed in a spectacular way. The ability for Russia to domestically produce its own gas turbines is not merely a technical achievement. It carries profound strategic implications. This is a crucial step toward ending a long-standing dependence on Western technology. The capacity to close the technological gap with Germany, which once dominated this sector in Russia, forges a new path for this country's economy. More significantly, this development paves the way for the complete replacement of German-made turbines in Russian power plants. As the scale of turbine production expands, Moscow can begin a gradual process of reducing and eventually ending its reliance on imported machinery. Their new capabilities in mechanical engineering aren't limited to turbines, they also open the door for a push into all types of higher quality machinery previously imported, including production in the aviation industry. This process will take many years to complete, but in this respect, President Vladimir Putin was right. Sanctions provided the impetus for Russian innovation, which was necessary to accelerate the modernization and upgrade of its aging technology. The launch event, which was attended by President Vladimir Putin via video conference and broadcast on the Rossiya 24 television channel, highlights the national importance of this development. It's more than just a news story about technology. It's a powerful message to the world that Moscow is striving for self-sufficiency and that sanctions, rather than weakening the country, are actually pushing it to become stronger and more independent. What do you think about the consequences of the sanctions on Russia? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget, subscribe if you want more deep dives into the battles shaping our world. Because in aviation, as in politics, the skies are never as calm as they seem. Thanks, and stay safe.